Yo, ladies and gentlemen, Booma here, back with another Rocket League video. Since we are getting near the holidays, uh, I am going to be taking a little break on uh, pushing out all the other content. Uh, it has been taking me a while. Uh, I had a pretty rough last month. So please bear with me while I uh, get all these content pushed out and hopefully uh, organized so you guys aren't feeling overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that I'm putting out. But uh, today I wanted to make a, another like short Rocket League video uh, because one of my viewers um, in chat had asked me about input efficiency. So they were claiming that they didn't really get resets or uh, power on their resets. So one of my like main solutions to this issue is uh, input efficiency. Um, and what do I mean by input efficiency? Um, what I mean by that is basically any movement that is necessary for that moment in time or that orientation that your car has, uh, you would want to input efficiently enough to where you aren't doing anything that you don't need to be doing. Does that make sense? So, especially for like reading a, a ball, okay? Let's just, let's just practice with reading the ball, right? Something as simple as this. Um, can be overcomplicated very, very quickly, especially in a game like Rocket League, where uh, as mechanical as the game is now, people feel like they need to be flashy. Um, and I feel like that kind of makes people forget that the best way and most efficient way to uh, do stuff in this game is, is with intention, right? So all your corrections in the air, all your, your touches should have intention behind them. And that is probably the most efficient way uh, to get things done in this game. So I want to start with the addressing the flip reset. Uh, so this person was saying that they could not generate power off of their flip resets. Um, and so I watched a few clips of theirs um, and their takeoff off the wall, first of all, seemed very, very like lethargic and out of place. And they're constantly like doing this type of thing. <laughs> And then they're not getting power off of the reset. So two things that I pointed out immediately were uh, like too much spinning already. So when you're constantly spinning in Rocket League, if you're not correcting the car, uh, you're going to be fighting your momentum, especially if your takeoff is not like the best. So let's let's give some examples here in a training pack, um, just so you guys can get a little better of an idea of what I was talking about. So obviously if your setup already, right, is not good. So let's just say you're popping it out this way. And now you're trying to bring this ball back in front of that. It's just not going to be ideal. Okay. So already off the rip, you're going to be fighting your momentum. If your if your setup is not good, this is extremely hard now to turn this ball around and get it to go into the net. Obviously, uh, you can do it, but the, the chances and the percentage of that going in um, are most likely going to be very low. So I want to tie it into the directional aerial tutorial first. Um, with that being said, I think you guys need to practice on just being efficient with your inputs. I mean, I'm going to be spamming that a lot in this video, but Basically, you need to cut out any movements that you don't need to be doing. So to be as efficient as possible, you should be looking at what your intent is, right? So if I just want to get a reset and shoot, okay? As soon as you get this reset, why do you have to spin anymore? Like you already have the reset. Now, you, now it's just deciding what to do with the reset, right? So all the extra spinning and, and flashiness is not necessary. I mean, you can do it if that's what you if that's what you want to do, and that's how you enjoy playing the game. You know, you want to be really flashy and go for like really mechanical stuff, but at the same time, it's not necessary, is it? <laughs> and in a real game, somebody's input efficiency can affect um, a lot of things. It can even affect your recoveries, right? If somebody bumps you and you you start to spin out of that bump, and you're like your car's out of control, and you're doing all this. 
right? You're going to be later to the play. You're going to you're going to recover slower. You're going to be later to the boost. Someone's going to win that boost over you, or you might not get boost at all. Does that matter? So I something that I always appreciated watching uh, pro gameplay when I was doing my come up in this game was uh, how efficient they were with their car movement. They just looked like in complete control the entire time. Even when, you know, they'd have a collision with another player. Even, even, you know, when they get like a very, very annoying bump or you'll get clip bumped in the air or whatever like that. It's always, they start to prioritize the recovery. Whether it be uh, a conscious thing or not, whether it be their muscle memory taking over. Because uh, you can make input efficiency your muscle memory. Uh, I'm at the point now in the game where... Uh, as soon as I see my car in certain orientations, I am immediately responding and correcting it. So, uh, obviously it takes time to get to this this point. But I think it's very, very, very important skill to have. Um, and we can get into some examples of... Maybe I have some ones games or, or something like that, but... Something as simple as, like, if you guys both have a head-on collision, right? The person who, you know inputs better is going to recover quicker and then get to that ball faster and potentially score uh before the next person right so now I, I i don't think this is a difficult concept to understand i think uh the best way you can probably begin practicing it is to play very brick what i mean by that is you know take out the flashiness of your gameplay and really focus on what you're what you're pressing every time you touch the ball you know if like the ball's rolling and you want to take like a light touch and then focus on like you know keeping the ball close stuff like that in a ones game uh ideally this way like you know because if you mess up in a ones game uh you're most likely gonna get scored on right so even this can be applied at every single level in this game and i think the beauty of it really shines at the highest level because uh it gets to the point where you are getting like calculated intentional uh touches at pace because you know at the highest level the pacing is obviously a lot faster than uh lower level rocket league so you're kind of forced to have to get these touches at speed you know otherwise somebody's gonna chow you or somebody's gonna dunk you somebody's gonna demo you um and if you don't if you're not capable of doing this uh it's gonna be a lot harder in the long run to you know speed up counter attacks and and Punish people for over committing, stuff like that, winning boosts in vital positions. So uh yeah. I think I think this skill is something every every single player needs to have and it even complements boost management. So if you feel like you're you're you know, setting up mechanical plays a lot and you almost like never have boost to complete that, I would highly recommend you go back into your replays and watch uh your car. Watch it. Watch if there's any unnecessary movement. If at any point you are fighting your momentum in the air, uh, and you're using more than like I don't know, I want to say like ten boost to recorrect that, that's already wasted. Wasted boost. If you're if you're always wondering how pro players can do so much with just a hundred boost, uh, we could go pull any, literally any pro uh, replay, and you can just watch how efficient they are with their car. Obviously, Zen is probably the best player in the world right now, so you guys can go pull, like, any Zen replay. Or just, you know, if you're on console, go watch, like, uh, any RLCS games on YouTube. Any Zen gameplay on YouTube. And uh, just watch how he drives his car on the field. It's All right, so I went and pulled um, a Zen replay, and this looks like it's from a Johnny Boy show match versus Moxie. So I want to show you guys... Uh, some examples of what input efficiency looks like, so... <laughs> you can already see here, uh... <laughs> how ridiculous Zen's control is, right? And obviously, I don't have to talk Zen up to you guys, you guys already know how good Zen is, but... This is a... Already a pure example of input efficiency, so... You can see right off his kickoff... His... First touch... And then he's touching it like that so that he can roll it up the wall with a side dodge and secure the boost in one flip okay then his pop off the wall it's perfect it's not too far ahead of him to where moxie has the advantage for the chow it's also not too far out into the mid 
So he's still on the line. And you can see how early he gets his flip reset here. Right? Because as soon as he realizes his car's momentum is already going up, um, he's immediately just tilting the car back, flying into the reset, and now he has the option. Right? So you can see Moxie going up off the ceiling. And he already has the advantage here because he has the flip. Right? So as soon as he sees Moxie like jump right here, he just moves he just air rolls a tiny tiny bit so that he can front flip and then you can see he he waits with his front flip he's not rushing it so he waits till the ball touches his nose and then he's doing a diagonal flip so he can hit it away from moxie and then you can see he even gets a second touch uh three touches actually which you can you can argue uh could be lucky but with zen i i highly think this is intentional um yeah, she. There's so many levels to this, because even even at the highest level, there are players who have much better input efficiency than others. Um, and I think that's very very cool, because usually it, it separates those players of you know who's more consistent at hitting the mech play, who's more consistent at, um, you know, doing the right things in the right spots, who's a better defender, who's a better uh, aggressive attacker. You know, players who who seem very annoying to play against. Um, tutorial wise, there's not really anything I can I can give like tutorial wise. I would say um, if you just go on free play and practice uh, with intention. <laughs> like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna be rinsing and repeating that a lot in this video. But I would really focus on just you know doing stuff like this and making sure you can you can recover for the next touch and mess around with getting like light touches or speeding the play up speeding the ball up i think it even gets to the point of uh your first touch gets improved when you have input efficiency because if you don't know how to like control the ball at like a certain speed or i know do do other things it makes it a lot easier to to outplay people um especially punishing them for for very silly challenges Anyway, let's go see if we can find some examples for you guys. And hopefully I'll be able to break them down. So this seems like a, a decent enough. It, it's not a complicated goal. It's not a sweaty goal. It's not a fancy goal. Um, this is this is a type of shot that I see a lot of people mess up. Um, and I actually made a comment about it the other day when I was playing ones. Is When people get um, the ball into this position... Um, they almost always fail the Doomsie Dish. And to me, the Doomsie Dish is always something that's, uh, it's like an old, old type of shot you can do. Um, and it's very, very rare that I see people score Doomsie Dishes in my games. I don't know what it is. This has always been one of my favorite ways to score the ball. Uh, just because it's, it's hard to defend as well. Like if there's a defender there, it's, it's pretty easy to dunk them. Uh, but we'll start with this uh, this demo dodge. So immediately, I realize this ball is going faster than me, right? So I need to speed up. So I am turning off my ball cam and performing a speed flip. Now, if you guys paid attention to Frantic Cartoon here, uh, he maintains his momentum across the net. Um, so he's he's playing for if this ball pinches out for them, then he can definitely beat me to it. But I am trusting in my teammate here, um, just because I look like he had the beat. Now, the issue is, as you can see, that I am facing the play. So my first thought is, I have to dodge a demo, right? Because if I just turn and I do not speed flip here, uh, he's most likely going to be able to just drive into me. Um, but at the same time, I had no idea that he has no information that I'm here in the first place. Uh, so, but that's like a chance that you, you can't really take, right? Cause he could unintentionally demo me if I'm just in his way. So as soon as I speed flip, I am making sure I begin the game of attrition. So I take the big boost and I'm getting out of the way. So this right here is a type of input efficiency because I'm trying to 
position my car into a spot to where I can win this boost, dodge the demo, and still beat Joshua Squasher to the ball. So that is something that I preemptively thought about uh, as soon as the ball was coming my way, right? Because I don't have to touch the ball. The ball is already, you know, on its way to me. Um, and I can have the beat if I'm just in the right spot. So this is a, another thing that I like to do because if people are paying attention to your car, if you have a player who is actually aware of what you're doing with your car, this looks like he, uh, Frantic got me off the ball. But you can see that I'm boosting. So before Joshua Squasher gets here, this is already too much space for him to close. Um, and he does have the boost and he can go for this, but... You can see how early I've jumped from the position that I was in. So it's almost like I manipulated him into thinking that I didn't recover uh, when I did. So that's something that I like to use at the highest level. Um, okay, we'll go find another one. Okay, we have found a ones game example, and I believe this is a save into uh, a goal, right? So doesn't look fancy whatsoever just an open net okay but what's important here and this is again another flip manipulation so if you guys pay attention here i am watching atlas's car the entire time so here i'm like okay he has control that's the first thought in my head so now it's a waiting game you have to choose the correct time to challenge so i immediately put myself in a spot to where if he does have the flip reset i can jump for it Okay, because you can see he's tilting his car for a flip reset. So you can see, once I realize he's going for this, I wouldn't recommend doing this because this is this takes a lot of timing and being in this position. Um, I preemptively jump to cover the angle because I am on the line, right? Because his flip reset can only go basically two spots from his angle. He can try to go to the, the close angle, which I have covered um, because if he just flips it, I can just use my double jump. I, I have to remind you guys that uh, I am saving the flip here. This is very important in these type of positions because if you double jump and you pick the wrong side, um, it's a goal for them. The flip is what allows you to change your momentum within the air. So as soon as I'm, I'm you can see I'm covering the close angle. Once I realize he's flipped the other way, I start to boost this way and then I use the flip to save this and then another important part about this is once i realize i've made the save it's now a recovery game so if i don't recover quick enough he's just gonna land down here so let's say i don't get this touch like in front of myself and i just leave this ball there's two things that are gonna happen if i just went for the boost here off of my flip he's just gonna come out of the net and play the ball back to his corner so he's gonna maintain possession so what I'm trying to focus on is maintaining the possession after the save, as well as recovering faster than Atlas. So you can see I'm manipulating my flip through the side flip so I can land faster and then beat him to this touch, right? Because look how quick he's already recovered, right? If I take an extra second here, I'm either demoed or he's recovering to save this. So this these things are very important to me when I play uh rocket league because i like to uh score off of mistakes so um this isn't like i said it's not anything fancy so as soon as i'm speed flipping i'm keeping my car in the air and i'm just air rolling through so that i can recover and i tilt my car this way because that's the way my momentum is going so if i want to come down faster to the ground i obviously want to tilt my nose towards the ground um because it's a physics-based game, right? So let's see if we can find another uh, recovery example for you guys. Okay, so I found a like a, a pretty okay like mid-sidewall read. Um, but these type of shots are only possible because of input efficiency. If you do not understand how to orient the car quick enough to... To read something like this then you're never going to be able to hit something like this i see so many people especially in twos and ones nowadays go and even 3v3 go for sidewall reads like this and they just end up hitting the sidewall either into the ceiling or you know like they miss it or whatever and it, and it just gets you scored on in the long run so 
in order to read something like this consistently, once you've already made the touch, you can see I completely stop. And then I'm twisting my car in in the timing I need to turn around to skim touch it. So again, it's not extremely complicated. It's just I feel like a lot of people don't let the ball do the work and they feel like their car has to do all the work. Um, and that's just not the case. So once you've already made the touch, then it's 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 almost like hitting a double tap. I would look at it the same way of uh, like if I went into. All right, so I found a double tap training pack um, and I'm just going to give you an example of what I would see people like doing. Um, and this is what I'm talking about, like they're just out of control, like trying to shoot something like this because uh, they're just constantly spinning like. You don't have to be constantly spinning. As soon as you've made your touch to the backboard, then just make your correction so you can actually get the shot on target, right? That's that's truly what you want with input efficiency. Um, there's not really much else for me to say. I just think it's something you need to put into your own game uh, because it's just going to make you a, a much better and consistent player overall. Um, and that's really all there is to it. But yeah, if this uh, this tutorial helped you guys, please let me know. Um, and if there's anything else you guys want to see in the future, uh, drop it in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one or on stream. Much love as always, and peace.